In the impact segment tonight, as you may know, Texas Senator Ted Cruz is at the forefront of the government shutdown debate, facing criticism from Democrats and some fellow Republicans. Today, while speaking at the Value Voters Summit, or VIVITS, a conservative <laughs> event in Washington, D.C., Cruz was shouted down by some far-left immigration activists. It is unfortunate. It is unfortunate that the administration... Who are those goofballs? Well, the factors investigating the group responsible and Bill will have a special report on that on Monday. I'm not sleeping until then. <laughs> Joining me now to react, let's bring in my five co-host and former gymnast Dana Prino. Dana, <laughs> you are heckled a lot to and from work, usually by children and the clergy. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a badge of honor to be heckled? That means you've made it. Right. If you're not, some people take it as a major compliment. Right. If you aren't getting the far left to come out and heckle you and with the paid protesters or OFA, whoever they whoever they were. Yeah. If you're not doing something to get heckled, then you're not doing it right. That's yeah. their perspective. I you know I crumble. Yes. When things <laughs> like that happen to oh, me. Oh no, you're a tough girl. You know the weird. I, I'm I'm pretty certain that these are left wing hecklers because do you notice there are never any conservative really conservative there's not a lot of conservative hecklers because they're usually working because well the inherent nature of their conservativeness makes it that they wouldn't ever they're just too polite yes it exactly. is too polite yeah to do that. also th it's the benefit of being a leftist or part of a left-wing group is there are so many around doing nothing in fact, their whole, the, the political is personal to them. So actually going to some place and yelling at somebody and personally disrupting where they work or whatever is considered a, a political act, even though it's personally obnoxious. And this is what you would call a protest backfire. Yeah. And so Senator Cruz handled it beautifully. Yeah. And he stands and, you know, and he, he kind of loves it. Yeah. And the, for the left, they love to make him the boogeyman. Of, of uh, He's the new guy to hate. He's in all the Tea Party, right. uh, Ted Cruz talking points that you'll see. Um, watch this weekend. And all the talking points you'll hear from the left, Ted Cruz will be mentioned every single time. But I actually think it backfired on them today. Yeah, it's an outgrowth of uh, the, the obsession with the Tea Party in general. Uh, for, for the left, the Tea Party is like the... The prom date that turned them down that they can't seem to stop thinking you, about. Does that still hurt your feelings? Yes, it does, actually. I can see that it really, you're I still scarred by that I am. experience. Well, it gives me the power to achieve. <laughs> All right, let's turn to a new Wall Street Journal poll, which I love to do. It basically says no one is faring well in the face of the government shutdown. 60% of those polled said they would vote out every member of Congress, including their own representative, if given the chance. Now, Dana, you are used to being disliked, even by your own yeah. friends who find most of your behavior unacceptable. <laughs> Isn't it purely American, dare say patriotic, to hate politicians and politics in general because you're busy with your own life being an individual? I, perhaps so, and, and, and that's changed, although I think this poll was different. Usually you'll see polls that say that everybody hates Congress, but they love their own congressman. Right. Um, this time around, I think that the trust in government is the lowest it's been in 40 years. 80% mm -hmm. uh, of the country thinks that Washington, D.C. has us on the wrong track, and only 11% approve of Congress. There, these are completely different worldviews of, uh, of what is happening uh, all across the country. But in the state legislatures, the Republicans continue to do really well, right. but nationally they're not. And their brand has taken a hit, but... And what you'll hear from some on the far right is that the hit was worth it. Yeah. Well, Republicans do well locally because they think locally. Uh, they don't think globally. And shop locally. They do that as well. Well, I don't know if they do that. But is it fair to compare the numbers of Congress to the president when the president really is a single entity? The Congress is a group of people. Uh, and in fact, it's like it's like people would generally like David over Goliath. So a sole figure usually polls better? Well, I think, well, no, I don't think so in this case, because what's interesting is on both the right and the left, and President Obama does this a lot, he is both the victim and the victor mm -hmm. in every single issue. Right. So they'll attack him mercilessly because it's him, but yet he'll claim that a win. But then you look at, like, the Obamacare rollout, and that's a great example of, they said the government was going to be so great. This yeah. new program is going to be so great. And if it's not, then it's also the opponent's fault because it's not great. Yeah. Well, we, Republicans are uh, always unpopular because of the anti-Santa Claus. So by being unpopular, isn't that almost a mark of achievement? 
or am I just spinning um, this? I think you're spinning am it. Am I spinning and it? It's, and if it causes you to constantly lose elections, yeah. then um, I'm not going to fall for that again. I'm not going to fall for the uh, the polls are wrong yeah. <laughs> again. Um, it was too heartbreaking the last time around. I think that the polls are serious, but I also think that the, for if you're looking at the 2014 elections, um, the Republicans are in pretty good shape. Nate Silver of the um, 538 blog, he came out today and said, that uh, the media is overplaying the shutdown, but the media overplays everything. Yeah. Now, Cruz, uh, Ted Cruz actually contacted you. Uh, do yeah, you have I thought that this was pretty interesting. So um, I was against the defund tactic early yeah. on and, and said so, maintained that. Um, on Tuesday, the five went yeah. down to Washington, D.C., and we mentioned this on Monday night. Heading down there, I'm on the train. I thought maybe I'd hear from somebody in Congress, anybody, mm -hmm. any smart PR person. The only office that contacted me. Mm -hmm. with Senator Ted Cruz and invited me over. I had a wonderful chat with him for about 50 minutes. Um, and I think that po the politics of the personal, getting yeah. to know somebody, actually works really well because I might not agree with the tactic, but I think he's a great guy. You should have told him to get darker ties. Dark, darker tie. Light You've been giving a lot of fashion advice. The light today. tie and the light you shirt. You didn't like my shirt. Yeah, you said it was Halloween. Yeah, it's very Halloween. You look like a tiny pumpkin. Making fun of Nick, Nick Gillespie. You look, like coming a, up. Do you look like a uh, Dana O'Lantern. Oh, really? Yes. Do you want to talk about what happened at the beginning of this segment? <laughs> oh, well, maybe. When they took away my pillow so that Greg would look taller than me, this happened, people. This actually you know, happened. It did happen. And you know what? That was uh, wrong, but I'm willing to see past that and see over your head to the teleprompter. Onward and upward, I say. Dana, thank you so much. Nice job on the five today, by the way, oh, despite me being out. Uh, you guys seem to handle it okay. Directly ahead, the GOP is now investigating the botched rollout of Obamacare. How badly damaged is the president's new health care law? I'd say a lot, but I say a lot of things. A factor debate straight ahead.